Joe the motherfucking go lad. He's a nice guy, isn't it? I heard I've always I've always heard he's a really, really nice guy. Yeah. Like anytime. Um my like I know a lot of people that are big club ball fans and they always say that he is genuinely a sound guy. Oh, like really? He's always about he's always about the club as well. You know what I mean? And he always chats the fans and shit. So yeah, I thought he'd be as sound as that like Three, two, one. What's happening, everyone? And welcome back to the greatest podcast you've never even heard of. This is the MC Podcast in episode 141. So in this episode, we are joined by Joe the motherfucking goal. Joe Gormley, Clinville's leading top goal scorer of all time. How was it? Yeah, it was actually a, a really good conversation. We were able to actually speak to him about his career, where he's went to, the couple of different clubs that he's been at, and... He's obviously out injured at the minute, so wishing him all the best to get back fit again for next season. But yeah, it was a great chat. And it was interesting to hear his story about when he went to England and obviously Scotland for Peterborough and St. Johnson not to, because it's a lot of people do just read him off as that oh, he couldn't do it, couldn't hack English football not yeah. to. But when you actually hear what his story, that he actually went through a really bad injury within the first month that he was there and mm-hmm. just never really recovered. Took him a year or two to recover but you know if you look at his record before he goes to england and after it's, it's fucking like 30 30 40 goals standing, a yeah it's ridiculous it's I think. but yeah uh yeah. enjoy enjoy you are now listening to the two podcast team oh, i'm all nervous here it's like me and ronaldo <laughs> <laughs> there he is can you hear us okay yeah yeah can you hear me okay yeah yeah sounds good can you see me all right or am i turning all right on no nah, it sounds good mate no, that's sounds sweet. it looks so good right. hi you're grand like so i'm dan and that's steven whatever way you see him what's happening mate well, how's it going man anyway How, how's things um, i'm all good mate i'm focusing i'm trying to do a wee bit of work here tell me how so i'm uh because <laughs> that's what we're saying like, you're actually currently injured aren't you yeah, um, I broke my humerus, so I did. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, so sore then? I know, I've done, I done it in training, yeah, it's not great. Like, so it's a bit sore now even still, but um, it's just something I have to get on with. Like. How long are you out for? How long, you, how long have, have you been out for and how long are you going to be out for? Oh, I've been out for um, two months. Two months exactly today, so sort of. Um, and then on pre-season, I, I think I'm going to be back, so... Yeah. Oh, so you're missing the whole season then, the rest of the season? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've only played 12 games this year, to be fair, so it's not been great. Like, it's... I don't say, and I'm probably, with an M12 games, probably scored about 30, 40 goals, probably, aye? Just... <laughs> oh, I just now, probably about I was like 30 to 40, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be a shit time, because obviously, given COVID and all crap and all too, but a lot of people are getting, finding comfort in football and all too, while your actual job you can't even do you can't even play football must be fucking tough for you especially given the climate uh, like yeah no it's not great at the minute though um i work as a youth, youth worker as well um and yeah an after school club so i've been able to do that there but i'm i'm obviously with the injury i'm out at the minute so yeah i'm so yeah. just fucking scared of someone bumping into me and then set me back for a wedge you know <laughs> are you able to like do you know why in normal times, like pre-pandemic, if you were injured and stuff, you were you'd be able to go over and still be around the club, maybe go to training and watch some stuff. Are, are you able to do that, or are they not even allowing you to go over with the obviously yeah. the pandemic? No, yeah, I'm um, I'm still able to go, so yeah, I'm and do a bit of rehab and stuff. So I'm still yeah. part of that. No, I'm I'm still part of the the training and stuff. But uh, obviously, without the me playing with the actual team, uh, me the physio has t- took a few of the players who are injured to say it and started to do uh, rehab and stuff with them. So it hasn't been too bad, but um, every Thursday the team have to go down for uh, you know, the testing. I think it's like a 15-minute a uh, year, year. It tells you if you're positive or negative. So it hasn't been mm-hmm. too bad. Before. Yeah, so uh, what's your opinion on the season thus, thus far? Uh, Joe, I know it's say different, no no fans, etc. Et, et and all too, and so many games have been delayed and all postponed and all too. Do you feel there's a wee bit of a disconnect with the players and the actual league itself? Like, I don't know, I was, like, I was just thinking, even the Premier League, the quality of the Premier League is quite poor. Are you seeing, like, the Irish League kind of suffering because of that? Yeah, without a doubt, because um, I think a few players, you probably get players who thrive on the crowds, you know, and a wee bit of the support in the yeah. background. And myself, I love playing in front of the Clinwell fans. You know what I mean? I think it gives you a wee mm-hmm. bit more, uh, 
motivation and stuff. And yeah. but then there's then again there's players who probably don't thrive on no with uh, people watching them. So it's it's it works out. I think it works out for certain players and certain players it probably helps as well. Do you know? But um, without the fans, like it's 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 not great. Like so it. Yeah. No, I was going to ask you as well, Joe, me and Stephen were talking beforehand and all too, because there's a lot of, Clinton have had a lot of uh, players leave and a lot of uh, recruitment over the last like 12 months and all too. I think we read a, a rumour, was it last year or was it even true that, was was it true you're about to leave or there was a rumour about you going to Glen Tor and stuff? Was there any truth in that there? Yeah, well, um, I've, I was I heard um, of a rumour about Glen Thorne, but I play, I, I'm a Clinton fan, you know, I, I love playing for Clinton and I've always said the only way that I would leave Clinton is if they were looking rid of me. Um, yeah. And I'm hoping it's not any time soon. But, <laughs> but listen, it's, um, obviously, if they, were, if they were looking rid of me, I would have to go, like, you know. But, <laughs> you kind of can't you know, stay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, you know I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. I was told that um, Glenn Thorne had made a bid for me and stuff, but... Uh, it was just it was put to bed right away, like so. It was you know with a phone call. Good man, um, good man. I'm happy where I'm playing. Did so. you did you start off with Clinton or was it uh, was a Crumlin star you started off? Start start off. With? Yeah, well, I started off. Well, I played for how many teams? So I have <laughs> so uh, I have all sorts of tactics, but no. Um, <laughs> I, start, I started off with. If I'm going back to my childhood, I played for Ardoyne, and then I went to Celtic Boys. Um, went to the Ardoin Working Men's Club. I went and gave Clinville under 18s ago. And there was a t- there was times at Clinville under 18s. I didn't even get a kit. Um, yes. So only played there for a year. So he, then I moved up to the Crumlin Star. My bro, he sang for Crumlin Star. And I, I followed him. And then one the first year I was, I got called up to the first team. And then the second year I scored, uh, I think it was 61 goals. 62 minutes. And then... And it? then I got I got I got I got a chance to to go and play in Irish League again. I think there was a, there was a number of teams after me and interested and stuff. But um, as soon as Clinville asked, I was I didn't hesitate one bit. Was Clinville always a team you kind of always wanted to progress to in the Irish League? Yeah, well, um, my, my mate, um, my mate actually played for Clinville the year before I joined. And um, I would have loved to play with him, but unfortunately, like the year I'd seen, he left Glenville. I think he just gave up football altogether and started concentrating in Gaelic. So, but um, yeah, but Glenville was obviously if you can't make it across the water, I think Gary League's the hash yeah. you can go you know when you're in your own country. So, yeah, that's see, where I want. To go. See that like period of whenever you're a kid playing football, you're playing on their tens up to like on their fifteens or on their sixteens. Just how hard is it to break away? From a team like St Mary's or a you know a local team to actually get into the Irish League because it always seems to be even at that level it is just luck a lot of the times or maybe you've been spotted by the right person but I guess maybe being a striker your goal record helps you a lot. Yeah, no, um, it's just I think it is. Um, it's it's interesting when you ha- you hear the likes of Clinville and Linfield and whoever it may be interested in you and I think um, it's it's a no brainer like isn't it for like kids yeah, who want to. They want to go to hear Clinville and they want to play for Clinville and I think or Linfield or whoever it may be and I think it's a no-brainer for them if someone comes mm-hmm. for them they want to be that that yeah, next player yeah. who's right to the top and I think that's I think it's um as unfair it is for the likes of uh, the local the, the local teams you know it's 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 what kids want. It's hard though, isn't it, to like to stand out when you're you know playing on an under sixteen under <laughs> seventeen level to actually get picked to go to play for Clinville or to be spotted because there's so many people that play football and I always feel like the development of people who play football like you can play at like an under 15 level and you'd be like oh yeah he's all right and then a couple of years later you went what happened to him Flip, look how good he is now you know what I mean it just it yeah. always seemed to me like it's it's like winning the lottery sometimes oh yeah like without a doubt I think um the, ma- the majority of it is starting to look like it's wherever you have that chance or maybe one day someone's watching you and you have a great game yeah. or else it could be the best player in a team could have a bad day and someone's so, watching you know and then the so next player are you saying I shouldn't give up? <laughs> yeah well <laughs> I, I, did, I didn't join Clinville until I was 21 <laughs> so 
I'm I'm 28. I'm 28. I'm 28. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play football. So. <laughs> <laughs> no one's going to spot you in your house, Stephen, for fuck's sake. <laughs> no. Are you any good at Stephen? No, not even. He's not even. Not even. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all right at college, you know? it is. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we all know, and even you, Joe, I'm sure you grew up with people who, not saying they're, they're better than you, but they're really good, who just ne- never made it. Either they gave up. And a lot of people do say, once you turn 18, if you're not scouted by that, at that time, you kind of have to give up. So a lot of people, I mean, Steve, know people in, in our class who were fucking amazing at football, but just gave up because no scout came calling at 16 or 17 years old. Like, But as you say, you didn't join Clinville till you're 21 years old, and that's considered old for a footballer like in that yeah no um definitely like even why I, I joined Clinville under 18s and i didn't even get a kit you know what i mean there was just there was times i was going didn't even play a match or else i wouldn't even pick in the team and you're like what do you do now do you, do you give up but obviously like i just wanted to go back and enjoy it and what, um was it because like they didn't see how good you were or do you think you going away actually helped you develop as a as a player as a striker no, I think it was just obviously the players in the team, the team before me were better, mm-hmm. do you know, the, and it was just harder to get on for me, so, uh, harder to get on the Clinton under 18 team at that time because they were very good to be fair. Mm-hmm. And, but it was just obviously going and getting the experience playing men's football. It yeah. probably made me, it probably made me a wee bit braver than what it probably was when I was under 18, you know. Yeah. And I got the breakthrough at from the start. But that first, like that, when you went to Crumlin Star and came back, and that four year, I think it was a four year period you played for Clemson, and you just won like two leagues. I think you just won like three league cups. It was like you, I know Liam Boyce was there for a bit, as, I know he went to Germany in between. Rory Downley was there for a season with you. That must have been some fucking team, though. Like the amount of goals flowing from just you three in particular, like Jesus. Yeah, no, the, that, that team then, though, um, I, I only got to play with Rory for about. About 15, 15 games, if even. Um, the year I joined, Rory had signed for Swansea in January. Oh, right. So he did. And, and um, it was, I, uh, it was a Chris, Chris Gunnell was, because I, yeah. I didn't play much games at the very start. Only the first year I played for Clima, only played 14 games, no, the, the first team. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was Chris Gunnell and Rory Donnelly that was up front. And then Rory went and I sort of, I sort of got a breakthrough. But um, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't too much. And then Boise had come back from Germany at that time. And then it was Chris Gunnell get injured one game against Glen Avon, I think it was. And then me and Boise uh, started being the strikers of the, the first team. But before that there, me and Liam were the, the strikers of the reserve team. That must be annoying because I know Liam uh, Boyce was actually amazing and he got the transfer to go to Germany for a bit. And then as you said, Roy left and then you be- Got, got your opportunity to be the striker. But then when when you hear Liam Boyce is coming back, are you happy? Or are you kind of like, for fuck's sake, Liam, don't come back. Don't try to take my spot. Because obviously yeah. he's a bit more established, a wee bit more established at that time than yourself. Obviously playing in Germany and all too. Did you see him, did you see, did you see it as a positive for yourself or, or more of a negative for yourself or something? Yeah, at that, at that third stage, probably it was probably a negative for myself because all I wanted to do was play. It was actually, um, I was actually so close to leaving the first team at one stage. I, oh, really? Um, yeah, because it was my, it was we were playing one game and I hadn't, I hadn't been playing much matches, and I was like, I don't want to be sub. I just want to play football. I only want to have a game up or play for fun. Mm-hmm. And it was, uh, we played Dungan and Swiss at Solitude, and it was the ninety second minute and. Tommy told me to go, like, get ready to go on. And I was like, I said, that I turned around to the kit man and went, how long's left? And he was like, two minutes or something. I was like, fuck, fuck's sake. <laughs> but as I, as I run on the pitch, um, trying to remember, the, go, the ball got crossed in, the defender headed it out, and I hit it from about 25 yards, and I went in the top corner, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this is the start of me getting a wee bit of luck. And I've had, there, I've but, had um, dreams like that to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, it was there. It was sort of like you know, you know yourself, and you get a wee bit of confidence. You score a goal, or you do something good. You wanna that's you. You're happy for a week. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So playing with uh, obviously you said you didn't play with Rory for that long at the first spell, but obviously you you both came back to the club later on. Who's better, Liam or Rory? <laughs> Liam, Boyce, Liam, Boyce, Liam Boyce is the best player I've 
play with in my career. Really? He is. He is a joke. And he just, it just shows you like how good he actually is because he scored goals for fun in Scotland, England, everywhere he goes. Nor in Ireland, he's actually scoring goals for us. But Rory, don't get me wrong, Rory is unreal as well. Rory's a great player. And uh, people don't realise how much work Rory does also. No rap of it other than scoring goals. But um, Liam Boyce, without a doubt, is the best player I've ever played with. Like. And it's something about Liam Boyce you don't really notice because until you actually go to a game, when I heard about, heard about Liam Boyce and I was going to games and stuff, I didn't really understand how good he actually was until you actually start watching him. Like you don't really just watch him off the ball. His actual movement, his touch, the way he actually links up, the way he's two linked up during them, the during them three seasons as well was, was ridiculous. But the way he links up with other players, like he's almost referred to just as a, a goal scorer, like a number number nine in the box, but he does so much more for the team. It's ridiculous like, how talented he actually is. Yeah, no, um, without a doubt, the skill, the strength, everything. He had everything so that he knew where the net was. I remember him playing one day to strength him. He hit someone on the shoulder. I thought they were going to have to have the day be out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and like, so you, so your, la- your last two seasons, I think you scored, it, was a, it wasn't good. A return 75 goals in 93 appearances. But it was not great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, um, see, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really great with the, the stats and stuff. Now I know, I know, <laughs> I was, no, I know my stats now for um the amount of games I've played at the minute. But I got it. for the first few seasons, I scored a, I scored a number of goals. To be fair, I mean the year, um, the two years we actually won the league, I think I had thirty, and then I got thirty seven. So it did. Ridiculous, but yeah, so definitely. them two seasons, then you actually get signed for Peterborough United. Obviously, it was a big, big moment in your career and stuff. But what was like your your thought process before that? Was there a number of clubs interested in you? Was that something you always kind of wanted to do, make the jump to English football? Well, uh, it was every, it's every kid's dream, isn't it, when they grow up, uh, they want to play professional football, and it just happened to be my chance. I got my chance whenever I was a wee bit older. Mm-hmm. Um, same for Peterborough when I was 25 so I played four scenes before I went away to Peterborough and um, like it was it was incredible when I heard there were actually teams across the water interested in me yeah. so um, but no um, it was it was unreal I think uh, I think there was two bids there was a bid from Motherwell and there was a bid for Peterborough and I just think Peterborough outbidded them I think so anyway I'm not too sure but um, so Peterborough obviously wanted to pay the more the most money, and uh, Clinwell had to accept it. So you are actually when you're going over there and all too, are you nervous? Are you excited? Like, what's actual emotions? Do, um, and also another question I want to ask you: Did you go over by yourself? Oh yeah, no, it's um, going over there. I was nervous because I'm not I'm not that uh, talkative now. Like I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a bit shy. I come across a bit shy. That that was then now, but I think I've actually. Uh, I think I've grew up a wee bit, and if uh, yeah. really, <laughs> you need you need to open your mouth and say stuff that you have to say. But no, um, when I was going over, I was probably shy boy from Ardoin, you know, and meeting new people. I probably I, I have I have a load of friends, but I think probably one of my weaknesses is talking to new people, you know, um, mm-hmm. getting conversations flowing and stuff, and um. Going over to Peterborough, it was just it was just a ma- massive eye opener, and I think like I probably struggled the trend. Now, don't get me wrong, I had friends there, and I went out with them and stuff. I went uh, shops and went out for meals and stuff, but it was it was tough going trying to get the get to know what they were like. A lot of people do forget because people just see the good side of it. People see, oh, Joe Gormley got to move to Peterborough for playing. Was it league was it League One or Championship at that time? Yeah. League one, League, League one. one. You know, I mean, people just see the positive, but don't people don't see the actual, the actual people you have to have. In your yeah, life as well. you're you're moving to a different country, and some would even say a different language. The way we talk here compared <laughs> to over there, yeah. not thing. So you you get there, and obviously it's not the great start. You actually get an injury within the first month in it of the season. Yeah, it was like oh, I was playing. I played a few was a few um, friendies and stuff. I actually, scored. I think I scored like four goals and three games or something for Peterborough scored against Spurs I played against awesome. West Ham I got man in a match so it was I was sort of off to a good start Yeah, and then I, I got into the actual league and I was like whoa like 
these guys are absolute animals. Really? They're, yeah. yeah, they're so physical, they're so quick, and there's me, and they're all probably like four years, five years younger than me. And I'm like, yeah. what the hell? But um, so we went and played a, we, had, we got a new manager, and um, he picked two teams to go and play against Norwich Academy, it was, and um, that's when I done my cruise shit, and I was like, fuck, Jesus. Was, yeah, heartbroken. Um, but listen, that's it's that's football for you, isn't it? It's if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. So, but it was just um, just a wee bit of luck, uh, just a bit of bad luck that I had, and listen, I got probably one of the worst injuries that a footballer could probably get. So, so obviously that's your whole season written off right there and then, wasn't it? Yeah, I was out for um. What was it for? I actually played my first game a year to the day I'd done it, so that Jesus, yeah. like as I said, like because like, when you're injured, you obviously probably don't get to actually socialize that much with the first team in terms of training, especially the injury that you had. So you're going into a different country, you know, I mean, as we said, almost a different language, trying to make new friends, uh, climatize and not climatize, but get used to your surroundings. It's like, hi, climatize, same weather, it's freezing on our down. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I mean? That that like how mentally how 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 hard was that that from the day you got your injury up until like till you played again? Like how hard was it mentally for you? No, it was it was so hard. Like so was I don't think people would understand how actually bad it was. And um I was constantly like bringing home and stuff and asking people like I was just trying to keep myself occupied, but at the mm-hmm. same time I was in uh Peterborough in a wee apartment on my own. Uh, my girlfriend come over. She come over and she come over quite frequently too. She just tried to keep me as as uh, as much company as she could. But it was hard for her because she had to travel from Belfast to Peterborough. It was it wasn't fair. But um, like I, I couldn't even walk for what was it three months maybe? Do you know I was in um, I was in a brace and it was like I was going home on my own. I was going to training on my own. You're like. Nah, this is fucking. This is hard work. Like, did you ever and, um, like? Did you really think? Did, did that make you really think about your actual career and like what you actually wanted in football? Oh yeah, because um, you work so hard all your life, don't you? To to get the opportunity, and um, it all comes crashing down within like what I went through on goal, and it was the like no one was near me, and that's what happened. You know what I mean? So it was like it'd been it'd have been different if I think someone probably tackled me, but it was something like. I went through on goal, I chipped it over the keeper and that was it. My leg just snapped beneath me and, and then it was game over. <laughs> Did you score though? That's crazy, least? mate. No, I didn't even know. I, <laughs> I didn't even score. Know you were, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, know. I know, but I don't even know. Like, If you were sitting there for a year, miserable, you could have been thinking, at least I scored. Good goal, good goal. <laughs> I didn't even score. Oh, well, I, <laughs> but, uh, no, but I don't. I don't realize. Uh, I don't think people realize how bad it actually was. No, for me being over there because you get fucking. No, oh, he couldn't hack it. He couldn't be this year. Yeah. But listen, but people, the people will always say, um, "How many you doing, fucks you Peter for Peterborough fans are still hammering me, saying how bad it was and all. Serious? <laughs> <laughs> Peter, we do thinking. get we do get a lot of Peterborough fans watching this. So, so you want to apologies. Say <laughs> <laughs> but nah. you're but you're right though. A lot of people don't know the struggle of actually you no know, moving to a different country and actually, as you said, the fucking league league one football is tough. It's not fucking a walk in the park. It's not like you're going to fucking you know a lesser league, going to an even harder league. Professional players, you know what I mean. And you're by yourself, as you said, in your apartment. Then you get a fucking injury like that, where you can't you can't walk. You can barely train. Like mentally, it must be fucking tough. Like. No, it was, it was, it was, that's what I'm saying is, um, like, people didn't realise how bad it actually was for myself as well, and probably for my family back home, you know, because obviously they're, they quit there, keep in contact with you constantly, and you're like, fuck me, what, like, is he all right, is he, yes, he's up? Yeah. So, um, so, so then, um, and then 2016 comes, you're actually fit again, but then you get loaned out to St. Johnson. Was that something you wanted to do to get to get first team football? Oh, yeah, no, um, because I was coming back, I was struggling, I was still, it was obviously in my head about my knee coming back, and um, I think they were looking at me. To, they were looking to send me on loan till Maidenstone or something like it was, and I was like, "No, that's, fuck that, fuck that's it. <laughs> if you're, if I'm going to go on loan, I'd rather go home." Yeah. And, um, I think I think, actually think Linfield came con- got in contact with Peter, but I'm not sure. I think they made it now, and then I was like, "Nah, no chance." 
So I don't want to. Because obviously, come you know what it's like. I was, yeah, I, yeah. I was a big Glenville fan. But, um, and then I says, is there any teams in Scotland interested? And just happened to, I got a phone call off my agent. He says, St. Johnson are interested. And I was like, I'll go where, definitely. Happy days. And then I went to St. Johnson and um, it was yeah. brilliant. I, I love St. Johnson. Like, so that really? I, I, I definitely think I could have, I could have played at Scotland. Now, I think there was, when I say like that my standard of football at the time was probably, it was probably good enough for Scotland, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but uh, I just, I don't think it did enough for me to stay there, but I was hooking, I was playing one day. I was, I was playing one night for the reserves. Obviously, it was in the first team, and uh, I wasn't playing for the first team. So the whenever you don't play, they put you down the reserve, and you play for the reserves. I went and played for the reserves, and um, I'm fucking free on goal at chop and say the defender and smash nose broke, and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and um, I just I went in till the I went in till the manager or the. It was someone, there was the assistant manager or something of the first team, but he was the manager of the reserve. And I was like, listen, that's me done hanging home. And uh, I went home, filled my car full of uh, all my stuff and fucking just, that was me, away home. What actually happened? You're through on goal and someone hit you? Yeah, so I, I cut inside him and he just absolutely elbowed me straight in the nose. And was, like, my nose yeah, you know. my nose was taking around corners. <laughs> and, and, yeah, but um, and then like, Fuck this! That's me done. I would so hold. You just had enough. Yeah. You say like, you just packed your bags and flew back to Belfast, yeah. aye? Because because of that, there, aye? I get in my car and uh drove to the boat, and that was me. Oh, you got a boat <laughs> home? Can you get a flight home? Yeah, no, straight. No, I was straight in my car, filled my car full of all my my TV, my places, and everything I had in the apartment, and that was me away from home. The the essentials, you know, get all get all the PlayStation, make sure the PlayStation's are. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, but what was like the what was what was St Johnson like? You no, know, like the actual club itself, and actually, you know, the day to day training and all too. Did you enjoy it there? And then, yeah, yeah, no, I absolutely loved it. So I did. Um, the people were brilliant. Um, everyone, everybody, everything about it was unreal. I was close to Celtic Park where I loved it. You know, I'm a big, I'm a big Celtic fan, so yeah. I got to go on Celtic every hour week. And, Amazing. Um, but everything, everything about it was just brilliant because it was close to home i could drive to the boat go home for the weekend and then but um yeah i, I would have loved to stay at st johnson but at the time it didn't do enough so yeah do you, do you find see because you have that experience with st johnson and then obviously peter where it was slightly different do you find yourself checking their scores and seeing how they're getting on I hopefully peter burr lose and then hopefully <laughs> st johnson get another win <laughs> tweet them <laughs> out <laughs> To be honest, I haven't seen um, from my time I was at Peterborough. I don't think they have one player. Yeah, Peterborough is sort of like a team who buy players to sell. Mm-hmm. And uh, now there is no, I don't think, I don't even think there's one player in the team that was there when I was there. But St. Johnson, like the mo- the majority of the team that was there when I was there are still there. Do you know what I mean? So it was yeah. like, but, um, yeah, no, St. Johnson was outstanding. And I've always, I'll, I'll always have a wee sauce spot for St. Johnson, except for when the place sounded big like. <laughs> <laughs> so, seeing you came home, obviously, you weren't allowed to do that, aren't you? Got, you're still kind of under contract at St. Johnson and at Peterborough. Was there any sort of repercussion because of that? No, I think the agents and sort of all out and stuff. And obviously, the new, the new to crack when we, the new to crack was because I didn't see at the time, I didn't even want to play football. Do you know what I mean? I came home and I was like, fuck that there football's not for me no more yeah. and um, it sort of put my head away but um, obviously when you're home and you realise you're like what the fuck am I doing I want to play football like and we got sorted and stuff with that I was able to play you know but I wasn't yeah, but, able that so, yeah sorry, sorry so, go I was going to say because you you joined Clemville that year but you couldn't play for him because of the rule you can't be registered at three different clubs during one season yeah it was something like you can play for you can play for two, but you can only you can sign for three, but you can only play for two. And it happened like the the the, the Peterborough game that I played, it was on for like two minutes. I was like, oh, Fuck it. two minutes, of, two minutes of football stopped me from playing. And then that was so that what that was me for out for two years. Do you know what I mean? So I missed a year with an injury, and then I missed. I came home in January. It was, and then I wasn't able to play till the next season. 
Yeah, because I can remember going to the games and it was all talk. Uh, Joe Gomez signing, but they can't play until until uh, until in the mm. following season or two. And you were actually at the stadium or two, you no, know, during the games and all two. And the, yeah. the the actual whole the excitement around just you signing. Like I felt that yeah. in the stadium it was like fuck Joe Comey's back is gonna be amazing all too. And did you feel that when you came back? Like the of like the, the fans, the support and all too, even in Belfast itself? Oh yeah, because it was always I always um Climbo was always gonna be my number one choice if they were interested in me, you know, and um it was all my friends were still there. I had a few mates who still kept in camp kept in contact with me, whether it was a Peter Ben, I was I was like Happy days if Climbell wanted to see me, I would, I would have been great. And then it, they ended up, they, uh, they eventually did see me. So um, it was just just the buzz about the whole place. Everybody welcomed me back, and it was unreal. And yeah, that, I think that's that just sums Climbell up. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And stuff some players, as you said, some players love the fans, and you're someone who thrives off out there. But uh, before you go, Joe, I'd love to run, up by, run something by you quick. Is obviously this season, was it last season or the season before you actually broke? Jack Mag- uh it was it Kevin McGarry's uh Clembo goal scoring record? That must have been an amazing feeling. Yeah, no, it was it was unreal. So it was and I think I don't think until I actually uh quit playing that it'll be I don't know realize how good it actually was because I think it's fucking it was so many years before it was broke. So it was it's always a good thing to have and um hopefully it can add many more to it. So Maybe no one will catch it. <laughs> I was going to say, because you're, you're, you're way ahead of it now, because you're, as it, it was 170, but now I think you're on like, was it 230 you're on or 240? Yeah, I think it's, I think I'm on 218, I think it is. Or, there you go. Do you know what? That's how, I don't even know. I'll tell you, so I scored 14, 30, 37, 41, 30. Oh, he's just some mathematics. Quick, quick mathematics here. Just let you know, we Third. can't count. So yeah, nah, just say so any easy. number. <laughs> Four thousand goals. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. No, I think it's um, I think it's two eighteen. I think I've gotten three, two hundred. No, fuck, I don't even know. I actually, don't even know. Hey, I think Wikipedia says two twenty or something out there. Like so, maybe they're fucking. Uh, I, something out there in three eighteen games, three hundred eighteen games, something like that. That's n- no one's gonna break that for a long time. I think, really. like, I think it's like it works out one point five goal every two games, something like that. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. That is frightening. Yeah. Like, uh, so obviously this year is a bit a bit weird for Clemble yeah. and all two. What what's your hope for Clemble to finish on? Yeah, just I would love them. Um, obviously, to finish as high as possible at the minute, but um, with the teams in the league, it's. It's hard to compete against because you've got the likes of Linfield, Lahore, and Glen Torn who are paying an awful lot of money yeah. and are full time as well. Yeah. But um, but I think Clinville are more than capable than than when you when you when you say for Clinville you want to win trophies and I think that's that's the main the main priority. You want to challenge for every trophy you can. But if if you if you obviously don't succeed, um, European football is a, is a must. You know. Yeah. But then again, as I say, as I say, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough ask. And it's something that I've talked about my brothers and stuff. Like the amount of money Linfield, just to, to see Linfield, for example, have in comparison to Clemville. Like actually, Northern Ireland football team rent those that rents the stadium out from actual Linfield itself. So that the amount of money, the amount of money they generate, you know, what I mean, uh, every international game is just ridiculous in compar- in comparison to the money Clemville actually have. So to see actually Kimball. Clinville actually compete with the teams like that there is is amazing. I know it's incredible. Like and it just shows you how good the actual actually Clinville Clinville are because when you do have the likes of teams like that there, Linfield and Lawrence and Crusaders, they're all full time, do you know what I mean? And um Clinville are more than capable of matching them on their day, do you know. So it's 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 amazing. And then whenever you do go one if you get if you do get ahead of them, it's a it's a big statement, like especially for a team that's part time playing against uh, pro or those full time teams. Exactly, exactly. I'm gonna say there is there ever any scope because obviously Clinton are not full time, um, but they're they're a big club. Like I'm from the Clinton like I'm, I live on the old park, and it is a big deal. Clinton is a big club, and when you look at Crusaders, maybe they have a bigger fan base. But why is it? Why are Clinton part time? Why why can't they make that jump? I'm not sure, but Clem or Crusaders aren't the bigger fan base than Clem. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, how, but then how come? But how how are they then full time? 
I actually don't. I actually don't even know. It's a, it's a good question to be fair, but um, I don't honestly don't know. So I don't. It's yeah. actually it's it's that's a good question. Probably when God knows me, but I honestly don't even know. Because Clinford would be one of the biggest teams in Ireland in terms of just the fan base and the actual notoriety of like the name that aren't now. That's why I, yeah, I was assuming. No. Yeah, no, without a doubt, I think Limbo's probably one of the biggest in the country. And but then again, it's it's financial and that um the, the financially stable of the club and stuff. So you have to be fucking God knows. Like I, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I way above our heads anyway. Fuck sick. Yeah, no, definitely. Hey man, Joe, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It was great chatting to you, and uh, obviously all the best with the injury, and hopefully you cover well for next season. With a bit of luck, no, I appreciate yeah. it. Um, if there's anything I can help you with, just you're more than more than welcome to ask. Like so. You are now listening to Empty Podcasting.